every once in a while you find like little tidbits in the in the New Testament about halachot laws, you know, that are really cool. But there's a whole passage in the New Testament in Acts five about Rabban Gamliel, mm. Rabbi Gamliel, right? And, and as Christians it, know him as Gamaliel, right, right. right. So it, it would it's more like Gamliel, uh, right. which literally means. God is also with me, right? But um, so and that's the name Gamliel, that actually appears in the Torah. Gamliel. He's one of the. I think he's one of the princes of the uh, of the tribes. Gamliel. Right, right. And so, Rabbi Gamliel appears in this passage, and it's a really great passage because um, Peter and the apostles are, you know, just escaped from prison, and then they get caught. And the question is, are they going to get killed? And Rabban Gamliel gets up and says, hey, you know, we've, we've seen movements like this before, messianic movements. No big deal, everyone. Just let it go. Like, everyone just calm down. And he lets them go, and everyone kind of takes a deep breath. Uh, and it's, this is, if, from the Christian side, that's all you know, that there was this Pharisee named Gamliel. Right, but from the Jewish side, it's like, hey, Rabbi Gamliel, he probably appears a thousand times in the Mishnah right. Talmud, right? And he's in the very first Mishnah. He's in the opening one about when you write recite the Shema, and on the night of Passover and the Seder, he is the most important rabbi. It says he says that if you do not fulfill these three things, you have not fulfilled your requirement for the uh, Passover Seder. Right, and so Rabbi Gamil is extremely important, and from the Jewish point of view, it also makes a lot more sense. Oh, Rabbi Gamil, we've seen him a few times be very lenient with other with the other. There was this one time he was in this Roman bathhouse to Aphrod- and it was dedicated to Aphrodite, and the the students are like, Rabbi Gamil, how could you? How on earth could you like wait, sit wait. in this bathhouse? Let, let's put some perspective here. Yeah. So he's sitting, as they would say here in the South, naked in the bathhouse. And the there's Aphrodite's. a statue of a naked right. woman in front of him, uh, who is a goddess, who's right. worshipped as a goddess. Right. And they say, what are you doing, Rabbi? Right. You're going to the bathhouse to stare at the right. naked woman. So what's his response? His answer was, oh, you know, the, the bathhouse was made. That's the main thing. The Aphrodite's was just like the the, the thing you add on top. It was, I think, it wasn't he, I think he said, she came into my bathhouse. I didn't come into hers. Isn't that what he says? <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Like, that, yeah. like and, I, I was here so, first. Like, this is my country. And they put us a, a pagan right. statue. It was, it's my bathhouse. Right. Yeah. And like, you see kind of lenient things. And yeah. it's interesting. Now that we have this, we can also kind of, with that perspective, kind of understand what was going through um, Raman Gamaliel's mind mindset in in the book of acts wait wait, and, wait we got to get know, some more perspective here so in rabbinical judaism you would never step foot into a house of idolatry so when he goes right. in the bathhouse and he's and they say what are you doing and he says well she's in my place i'm not in hers um right. that is a vi- you can't underestimate what a big it's not just that she's naked he's walked into the house of idolatry from the perspective of rabbinical judaism and he's saying, look, like you said, it's, it's, this isn't really a place of idolatry. It's a base of a bathhouse, which is the idolatry is encroached in there. It's secondary. So that really is a leniency right. from a rabbinical right. perspective. Right. Yeah. And so, wow. um, so, yeah, so we have all these things. Roman Gamaliel, is, you know, it's hard to, to emphasize how important a rabbi he is in the Mishnah in Talmud. Um, he's definitely we would call, I'd say like a hall of famer, you know, there's no question he's uh, unbelievably important. And now it's kind of like, Oh, from the Jewish perspective, Oh, Hey, he appears in the new Testament. He, he even it, there's in acts and also later on, it says that Paul who, um, who interestingly uh, claims to be the most religious Pharisee of all the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Right. So he actually studied with Gamliel. So it's, a, mm-hmm. these connections are very interesting. And so for those reasons, I actually call that the obvious connection, right? Okay. Those are the obvious. Hey, Gamliel, Gamliel, why aren't we both studying both? Right. Why aren't, why so aren't the, more Jews? It's the obvious this? connection of the new Testament with the, with the Mishnah you're saying. Right, is that okay. is that this one person appears in both, and that's really right, interesting. Right. But it's only Gamaliel. There's no Wait, one else. So before like you that. leave Gamaliel, um, or Gamaliel, so uh, it's actually interesting. So Paul says in tw- Acts twenty two th- three, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia or Cilicia, but brought up in the city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, 
according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers. And that's, I always thought that was a really interesting phrase, educated at the feet of Gamliel. Um, can you say something about that? There's, so, there's something uh, in the in the um, Pirkei vote that ties into yeah. that. Yeah, there's a lot about Pirkei vote about studying yeah. at the feet of the scholars. Right, right, right. And, right, and, and, you know, it was probably both um, literal like that, that's, and... That's an expression. Well, it talks there also about the dust of their feet. Because literally, right. right, you're, you're, right. you're yeah. sitting, you're, you know, there probably wasn't a lot of chairs and, uh, you know, they'd be in a crowded room and they'd literally be at the guy's feet. Right. And, you know, if they were in a synagogue, there were only so many spaces on the wall where you could sit. Yeah. Everyone else had to sit. Um, yeah. It's, they were sitting also, on the remember, floor. We didn't, and we didn't have the same books like we do today. You know, you had to study mouth to mouth, you know, um, somebody would have to tell you and recite to you the Mishnah and things like that. So um, definitely that that ties in what Paul is saying. And, you know, it, it's interesting elsewhere, Paul says that he does so many things that are, you know, rabbinic, um, but he obviously makes regrets that in some way and, and takes a new life.